Hey guys, what's happening? Uh, today I'm going to be reviewing an awesome RPG for the PS2 called uh, Valkyrie Profile 2, if you couldn't tell by the title down below. Um, I actually knew nothing of the series until I saw a very tiny review in a magazine. I think it was like EGM or something. And, you know, they had like a little tiny screenshot. Um, but based on that, like the game, like the game looked beautiful and like it sounded really good. So I went and picked it up and yeah, it's one of the my favorite RPGs on the system. Um, now the story um, centers around Alicia, who's the main character. Um, she's the princess of Japan, and uh, she actually has the Valkyrie Silmaria residing within her. And um, for this reason, she's banished from the kingdom by her father. Um, and a lot of the game, you know, centers around getting back to Japan to confront her father, the king, about it. Um, at the same time, you're trying to find this item called the Dragon Orb, which is um, something that Odin from uh, Asgard is trying to get. Um, and uh, Silmaria is dead set against that because uh, she fears that Odin, Odin's intentions aren't pure and uh, he's going to raise some hell on Midgard. Um, and it's really cool because a lot of times you'll have like you know, Alicia will be talking to herself, basically. Um, you'll be able to tell, like, who's who, though, because, you know, when Alicia talks, her text is all in white, and Silmaria talks, and, like, her text will be in light blue. Um, and, you know, they do have different personalities. Like, Alicia's kind of the uh, shy, timid princess. And then when Silmaria talks, she's a little bit more aggressive, you know, to the point, uh, you know, knows what she wants to do and how to do it. And um, So you'll be able to tell the difference, like, who's who, but it's just interesting to see like someone actually standing there talking to themselves, kind of like Gollum, Smeagol, you know, that kind of thing. Um, not as demented though. Um, the story though, it's you know, it's not the greatest story in the world, but it's better than average. Um, you know, keeps you going through the game. Um, and uh, for characters in this game, you start off with Alicia. Um, you quickly meet up with Rufus um, in the. Uh, first town, I forgot what it's called off the top of my head, um, and then, you know, you go to the uh, first dungeon, or set of dungeons, and you eventually meet up with Dylan and Lazard, and, uh, of course, you'll meet other story characters along the way, and this game, in a way, it's kind of similar to Final Fantasy Tactics, because you have your, your story characters that you, you know, get by, you know, doing certain events, and then you have your kind of generic characters, um, that you can recruit throughout the game. In this game they're called Ein Harrier, and you actually find those by, um, you find a weapon in a dungeon with a blue glow around it, and it'll say, like, for instance, a uh, sorcerer's soul emanates from the staff, and then, you know, you hit X and, like, it'll summon one of the, uh, characters within that weapon at random. So, uh, yeah, you can get a, uh, pretty big party of characters. I think it's, per playthrough, I think you get, like, 20, 25, um, you know, story and your, uh, Ein Harrier characters. And, uh, something really cool about this game is you actually get characters throughout the game. Like, even in the final dungeon, you get some really, really kick-ass characters, which is something you just don't see in other games. And, uh, you know, that's just one of the ways that this game is unique. It's unique in a lot of ways. Um, the big thing would be the, uh, the gameplay style of it, it is actually a uh, side-scrolling RPG, which doesn't happen very obvious, often, especially now. Um, you know, the backgrounds and everything, they're all 3D environments, but you can only move, like, left or right. Um, occasionally you can move up or down, and that will, you know, move you inside a house, or if you're in a dungeon, it'll move you deeper in the dungeon. Um, or, you know, vice versa, you'll exit or go down level. Um, so, you know, that's very unique, and, uh, you know, while you're in town, you'll be able to, of course, talk to townspeople. Um, there's a shop you can go to to buy weapons, um, armor, items, all that stuff. Um, in the dungeons, though, things are a little bit different. Uh, you'll be able to swing your sword, and um, what this does is, well, sometimes it'll let you break stuff, but, you know, the main purpose is to uh, engage enemies. and. It's kind of similar to uh, Persona 3 and 4, where you have, like, just kind of generic shadow, shadowy uh, figures in the dungeons, and, you know, you slash them with your sword, 
and that'll initiate combat. And um, if you actually slash them first, you'll get um, a full AP bar at the beginning of the battle. Uh, if they touch you from behind or whatever, or they initiate it, you have actually zero AP at the beginning of battle, which means you can't attack or do anything besides move around. Um, another neat thing is when you're in the dungeons, you can cast photons, and what these do is they'll actually crystallize the enemy. And uh, when the enemy is crystallized, it's only for three, four, or five seconds maybe. Um, you can actually use them as a platform to uh, get to new areas or just avoid them altogether. Um, you can also cast another photon at them and you'll actually swap places with the crystallized enemy. And um, uh, you can also cast your photons off the wall and they'll deflect like three times. So, you know, the combination of all these things, you can actually reach, you know, platforms up in high places to get all the treasures and stuff. And, um, you know, so they, they get really tricky later on. I actually did manage to get like you know, all the items in the dungeon, it was not easy. Um, but it adds a nice, uh, unique challenge to the game. Um, you know, one thing cool too is that when you're in the dungeons, you can hit the, uh, I think it's the right one button, one of the shoulder buttons, and it'll bring up a map and you can, you know, of course, you know, rotate it left or right, up or down, uh, you can zoom in or out, and on the bottom it'll actually show you, it'll say, uh, how, what percentage of the map you've uncovered and then like what percentage of the treasures you found so that is very handy for um, you know just for a completed the game um, and uh, you know something I forgot to mention is uh, the graphics the graphics are got to be like one of the best looking games on the PS2 um, you know just gorgeous environments the character models all look great they're like greatly detailed um, it's just a real pleasant game to look at, and uh, it actually does pr support progressive scan as well. Oh, and before I move on, um, one thing I want to mention too about the photons is it's actually possible in most of the dungeons to use your photons and completely avoid combat until the final boss. Uh, you'll probably get annihilated by that boss, so if you don't uh, fight all those you know little enemies in between, because um, the enemies in this game and the bosses, they're all extremely strong. It's a very, very challenging game. It's one of the uh, toughest RPGs I've beat. Um, it's either Final Fantasy III for the DS or this one. Um, you know, those are the two hardest ones I've finished, and uh, yeah, neither one is a cakewalk. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Next up is, uh, before I get into the battle system, I want to talk about the music a little bit. Um, composer for this game is Motoi Sakuraba, and uh, I'll admit I'm not the biggest fan of his work. Um, he's done some of the, uh, actually probably all the Tales games. Um, he's also done work on the uh, Bot and Kaidos games on the GameCube. And while his stuff is never bad, it's generally pretty forgettable. Um, you know, there will be a couple tracks here and there that, you know, you'll remember, but the rest of it is just kind of all blends together. Um, this game actually seems to be a, uh, a very, very good soundtrack. I actually can remember a lot of the songs, and, uh, yeah, just really nice. Fits very well with the uh, Valkyrie um, theme of the game and the whole Midgard, Asgard thing. Um, yeah, so great soundtrack. Um, getting back to the battles, though. So, you know, let's say you, you use your sword, you hit the shadow, and you initiate combat. Um, well, first of all, when you get into combat, the game goes fully 3D, so you'll be able to use the uh, left stick to, you know, move around the battle map. And um, you'll notice at the bottom of the screen, you'll have 100 AP or 0 AP if the enemy snuck up on you. Um, and the AP gauge is used to attack, it's used for items, used for magic, um, also used for one other thing, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, and then you'll also notice, like, all the enemies standing around, and uh, they won't be doing anything, but you'll notice, like, these uh, red areas around them, like, sometimes it'll be a straight line, sometimes it'll be, you know, a cone, sometimes it'll be a circle around the enemy. And uh, these are, of course, the enemy's attack zones, and if you wander into them, they will attack you. So, um, the battle system, it's kind of a weird flow. It's kind of like... It's kind of turn-based, but it's kind of action. Um, so, like, if you just stand there, the enemies will just stand there and do nothing. 
but as soon as you start moving, the enemies will start moving too. And, um, you know, you may wander very close to one of their attack zones. Now, um, you know, of course you don't want to wander into there and take damage, so what you can do is hit one of the right shoulder buttons to dash. And uh, you'll, you know, you'll charge forward in a straight line or whatever direction you press. And, um, you know, you can use this to get a strategic advantage on your enemies. Um, and sometimes if you want to target a specific body part, because, um, you know, certain body parts yield certain items if they break off. Um, but yeah, it's also useful for, you know, just avoiding enemies' attacks completely and charging at them and then launching your own attacks. Um, and the way you attack in this game is really cool. You have a four-character party, and um, there's four classes of, of, you know, your party members. Um, you have sorcerers, which of course deal magic, uh, archers, which fire bows, heavy warriors, which yield great swords, and then the light warriors, who just use the standard sword. And, um, you know, you map each one to a shoulder button, and then, you know, you hit one of those when you're in range of the enemy, and then you can, you know, have the other ones attack too, and each character can have um, from either between one and three attacks equipped, except for uh, sorcerers, they only get one. Um, but, you know, you can keep hitting the buttons and keep attacking the enemy. Each attack, you know, burns up AP, so as long as you have AP, you can still attack. Um, and, you know, you can, like, button mash your way with the battle system, and, you know, you'll do okay. But it's, uh, you'll do much better if you time your attacks well, because you can knock your enemy into the air, and while he's in the air, if you hit him again, he'll uh, drop magic crystals, which will give you more experience, which, of course, will love you, level you up quicker. So, you know, it's kind of similar to a fighting game in a way that, you know, you can button mash sometimes, but a lot of times it's better to kind of wait and time your attacks well and, you know, all that stuff. Um, another thing about the battles is on the, well, it'll be up here on the game, on the uh, right hand side, you'll see like a series of five dots, and this is kind of like a timer, so if, oh, before I do that, I'll tell you about that, um, every enemy party has a leader, and uh, you'll see on the map on the top uh, right corner of the screen that, you know, the leader will be colored differently on the map, and if you attack that leader and you defeat him, all the other enemies will run away and you instantly win the battle. So um, your goal in every battle is to go for the leader. You can, you know, deal with the little, the little runts or whatever. I usually go, just go straight for the leader because, you know, it ends the battles quick. And um, if you end the battle quick enough, when all five dots are lit up, you get the uh, most amount of experience. But as time progresses, you know, those dots start disappearing, and for each one that disappears, you actually gain less and less experience when you win the battle. So it's advantageous to, you know, go right for the leader, uh, end the battle as quick as you can, and, uh, of course, you know, time your attacks well and get all sorts of magic crystals. Um, another thing you'll notice, too, is in the bottom left corner, when you attack, a little uh, special attack gauge starts filling up. And when that hits 100, as long as your character has the right weapon equipped, you, 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 equipped, <laughs> equipped, you can uh, do a soul crush, which will, which will do a kind of limit breaky special attack type of thing. Um, that it looks freaking amazing, and uh, you know, do a little extra damage. And uh, yeah, they're I like them a lot. It's a lot of fun to do. It's you know, it's kind of repetitive, but. Um, I like it a lot, and, you know, if all four characters have uh, Soul Crush available, you can, you know, link them together and just do an insane, insanely damaging attack. Um, so, I think that's pretty much it for the battle system. Um, like I said before, you can break certain parts of the enemies off, and um, you can actually equip these as items, and uh, they have, you know, like, certain runes with them. And by linking all these runes together, you can learn skills, um, which, you know, of course, help your each party member in different ways. Um, oh, uh, one important thing I forgot to mention about the dungeons are uh, seal stones. Uh, seal stones are these uh, magical objects that, um, you know, either have positive or negative effects, 
and they can affect your party or the enemies. Uh, for instance, you might find one that sends your attack up 20% or, um, you know, nets you more money or experience at the end of battle. Um, obviously, you'll want to carry those around with you so you can, uh, you know, you can reap the rewards. But then sometimes you'll run into one that will, like, reflect damage or something. Um, now, obviously, that's not something you want to use in battle because, you know, you're going to be killing yourself as you're killing the enemies. So, uh, how do you do? How do you get the enemies to feel that effect? Well, you have to find the special pedestal called a dais, and uh, by setting it on there, all the enemies in that section of the dungeon will be affected by it. And in certain dungeons, you can actually link several of them together, so you can have like, you know, reflect damage. You can have uh, a lower attack power. Um, you know, you can have them kind of basically poisoned so their hit points keep going down throughout the battle. Um, and, you know, there's all sorts of different ones, so all sorts of fun combinations you can do. In addition, you can carry some around with you, so you can really, you can really mess around with the battles quite a bit. Um, the game is it's pretty long. It's uh, very, very challenging, like I said. Um, uh, if you find the game not challenging enough, there's actually a uh, bonus dungeon that you can unlock when you get to the final save point called the uh, Seraphic Gate. Um, that's the only part of the game I haven't beaten. Um, it is really freaking insanely hard and uh, <laughs> I just kind of gave up on it. Um, I will get back to it eventually. But um, yeah, you can do that and of course you get you know special weapons and characters and stuff. Um, another thing too is this game has New Game Plus but it does it totally different from any game I've ever seen. You know, normally New Game Plus you get to keep all your items and stuff and, you know, a lot of times you get to keep your levels and just like, just like walk over anything in your path. Uh, this game decides to uh, do away with all that and instead it'll make all the enemies just a little bit stronger on each playthrough. So, you know, you can keep playing through the game, playing through the game, and the enemies will keep getting stronger. Uh, and you can actually do this up to 50 times, which I can't imagine playing this game 50 times and uh, just how challenging it would be. Um, let's see, what else? You know, I, I think I pretty much covered everything. Um, you know, there's not much I can't say like bad about the game. It's, uh, it's just well designed all around. It's very unique. Um, uh, the first game is also very good as well. It's actually got a better story. I think the combat's better in this one. Um, but, you know, both games are excellent. Um, yeah, like I said, nothing really bad to say about this game. I do have a slight thing to say about the uh, sequel. Um, a slight rant, I should say. Um, for some stupid reason, they decided to release the next game on the DS. And... Uh, you know, while I get why they did that, because the DS was, like, super popular, and, you know, there were tons of RPGs on there, so they kind of wanted to, uh, go where the RPGs are and where, you know, the most customers are. But, you know, this isn't Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest. You're not going to put this series on the DS and have it print money. It's like a, it's a niche PlayStation, PlayStation, uh, series. Um, it probably pissed off a lot of fans, too, because... There's a lot of people out there who, you know, don't want a Nintendo handheld or hate handheld gaming in general. So, you know, taking one of their favorite franchises and putting it on the handheld, um, not really a good thing. And, you know, there's a lot of DS owners who probably saw the game and were like, the hell is this? Um, you know, I th think it would have been a much better idea to have the, uh, Valkyrie Profile Leneth. Um... You know, they ported that to the PSP. They could have ported, done that port to the DS as well. Um, see how well it did, and then, you know, think about releasing Covenant of the Plume on there. Um, but anyways, uh, that's my review for Valkyrie Profile 2. Excellent, excellent JRPG on the uh, PlayStation 2. Um, if you find it, pick it up. I think they go for like 15 bucks. I found mine at a uh, Mega Media Exchange for 10 bucks actually. Um, pretty recently. Um, I'm on my third playthrough now. I played through it once when the game originally came out back in 2006. Uh, you know, once about a year later, and now I'm 
on my third playthrough. But yeah, uh, check it out. It's an excellent game. Very unique, very challenging. Uh, well worth your money. But this is Alpha... Al uh. Anyways, this is Alpha Welltel 1028 signing out. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.